temples lie at the heart of Taiwan's religious life, as well as acting as social centers. Temple culture not only reflects the lives of ordinary people, it is also an essential source of sustenance for Taiwan's traditional cultures. The many temple festivals that take place in Taiwan are all occasions on which the faithful express their sincerest thanks to deities through the performance of rites. The wealth, vitality, and joy of these events bring forth the richness of Taiwan's culture and are an expression of popular desires for peace and prosperity. Temples are found everywhere throughout Taiwan, in villages and cities, in the mountains, and by the sea. Although they may appear similar in traditional communities, these old simple temples often provide a record of local historical development and are also a force that shapes the social and economic activities of the area. Four centuries ago, when the first Chinese crossed the Taiwan Strait to make a new life in Taiwan, they faced many hazards upon the sea and an uncertain future on land. They carried with them images of the guardian deities of their hometowns, to whom they could pray that they would settle safely in their new homes. Once established, they always built temples to give thanks. These deities accompanied Taiwan people's ancestors through the arduous years of pioneering life in a new land, becoming the guardians of these new communities. In this process, they grew new roots in the communities in which they were established. Faithful adherents supplicated the deities for protection and guidance. In a period in which communities sometimes competed violently with each other, deities also served as a communal focus, binding people into communities and assisting them to overcome homesickness and the difficulties of their new lives. Temples served as places for people to assemble, discuss issues, and exchange information. When people weren't busy with harvesting or planting, temples also served as centers for training parade troops and militia for communal defense. Religious festivals were characterized by their many exciting performances. Such religious activities reinforced ties of friendship and community, and temples also gradually acquired political and economic importance and became centers of culture and entertainment. They were the focus of traditional communities. Temples are places where humankind communes with the spirit world. They also serve as important landmarks. The building of a temple generally brings together craftsmen, artisans, local scholars, and gentry to participate in its planning and construction. People like to give thanks for good fortune, and so, when their economic circumstances improve, they often wish to provide more elaborate accommodation for their deities. This means inviting top craftsmen to make expensive additions, thus making the temple more majestic and ornate. Temples have both historic and artistic value and are a sincere expression of people's faith.
Temples in Taiwan follow the basic principles of southern Chinese architecture of the Minnan region of Fujian province. Since temples are influenced by local social, economic, and cultural circumstances, each has its own unique character. Temples generally have one, two, three, or more halls. Higher ranked deities tend to be given temples with more numerous halls and doorways. Woodworking techniques used in temple construction are among the highest achievements of traditional architecture in Taiwan. A broad ceiling is supported by pillars and lintels. Multi-leveled roof supports are not merely indicators of status, but also an expression of the craftsman's skill. Diverse decorative elements are another attraction of Taiwan temple architecture. Great attention is paid to sculpture, inlay, ceramic work, calligraphy, and painting. Many temples are truly treasure troves of art. Artists' skill and knowledge are used to create majestic stone lions and gorgeous dragons curling round temple pillars, which stand guard against evil influences. Legends, folk stories, and historical characters are portrayed on temple roofs and lintels, like scenes of a storybook. Vividly portrayed flowers and animals, and gracious lines of auspicious symbols, express humankind's eternal pursuit of beauty. Intricate carvings and a diversity of grillwork are a manifestation of Taiwan folk aesthetics. Profound couplets and plaques bear witness to a temple's history and its close association with local scholars. Brightly colored and fierce-looking guardian spirits painted on temple doors serve to keep evil influences outside the sacred precinct of the temple. While enjoying such artistic splendors, it might be noticed that works sometimes appear to have been executed in different styles. This is due to the demands of construction, for when time was pressing, two artists may have been commissioned to work on the same piece. Competition often ensued between the two, as each tried to outdo the other in the beauty and intricacy of his work. This kind of creative competition is a feature of Taiwan's artistic heritage. While Taiwan practices religious freedom, the traditional religions of Buddhism and Taoism predominate. There are also many folk deities as well, of which Mazu, the fisherman's deity, and the plague god are two of the most important. There are also many other nature gods, local earth gods, guardian spirits, and ancient sages. Whether spirits of heaven or earth, or of persons or things, they all have superhuman qualities with which to fulfill their roles.
In earlier times, temples were dedicated to a single deity. As trade and population increased, however, a single community would have a variety of spiritual needs. Merchants prayed to Guan Gong or Tu Di Gong, the earth god, for good fortune. Students made offerings of radishes, celery, shallots, and rice dumplings to Lord Wen Chang for success in examinations. And young couples sought the blessing of the old man under the moon for a happy marriage. Later on, therefore, temples became places for the worship of a group of deities, regardless of whether Buddhist, Taoist, or folk god, so long as each deity catered for the needs of a section of the community. This led to the practice of dedicating temples to numerous deities. With many temples in Taiwan, particularly the larger ones, combining Buddhist, Taoist, and Confucian worship. Folk religion in Taiwan is closely associated with popular festivals. Every year, there are ceremonies to welcome deities, send them off, ask for blessings, or otherwise interact with them. Festivals take many forms, but all are used to express the gratitude of the faithful. The various festivals not only reflect the close connections between locality and religious affiliation, but also the development of unique local customs. Some long-established festivals now attract tourists. Among the most exciting are the nativity festivals of major deities. The 23rd day of the third lunar month is the Nativity of Mazu, a festival involving Mazu temples throughout the country. According to legend, Mazu is the guardian goddess of fishermen and other seafarers, and as Taiwan is an island, her worship is naturally very important. During the third lunar month, Taiwan becomes gripped by Mazu fever, as the ardor with which the faithful throw themselves into the festivities is described. The term jinxiang, meaning the offering of incense made by pilgrims, is used to describe the participation in a parade in which a deity is carried from community to community. These are often massive affairs covering long distances in which participants worship along the way to show their piety. Holding sticks of incense, pilgrims hope to carry the deity's palanquin and pray for protection from evil. Shops along the route will lay out offerings, each competing with the next. By providing food for the pilgrims, they also advertise themselves and generate good connections with the community. Nighttime parades are one of the nativity celebration events. Generally speaking, those who have nighttime parades only include deities that span the living and nether worlds, 
as well as judicial deities and the city god, who have responsibilities over the living and the dead, of determining good and evil. Such night parades allow the deity to investigate human affairs and avert evil influences from the community. Deities are just three feet above your head, advised the ancients. In many ceremonies, therefore, people volunteer to act as palanquin carriers, servants, or guardians of the deity in penance for their sins. In traditional society, this principle also served to discourage crime and promote virtue. Even in today's rule of law world, these traditional ceremonies continue to perform this function and their value is still widely recognized. Other features of these ceremonies of worship and thanksgiving are the performances and competitions that accompany them. These take a wide variety of forms and express the fervor of people's faith. Amidst the din of drums and gongs, performers do their utmost to win the favor of the deities and the applause of their audience. This entertainment for gods and humans makes temple festivals a showcase of folk arts and has provided them with a forum in which they can be passed down to future generations. Taoist sacrificial ceremonies are also an important part of Taiwan's religious life. These are especially popular in the south, the largest being the three-yearly king boat ceremony or plague sacrifice, in which the plague god is called upon to rid the area of pestilence and bring peace to the region. This is also known as a tour of inspection of the gods. The two most famous king boat ceremonies are held at Qing'an Temple in Shigang, Tainan County, and at Donglong Temple in Donggang, Pingdong County. The king boat ceremony requires the construction of an ornate boat in which the plague god can travel. This boat is carried throughout the town streets to rid them of pestilence. Finally, fully loaded with pestilence, the boat is carried out of the town and burned. The huge boat becomes a massive bonfire, before which people stand and pray in silence, hoping that the fierce flames will carry away adversity and disaster and bring peace and prosperity. Many ceremonies are associated with a specific locality in which a deity is called upon to rid a harbor town of pestilence and bring good fortune to fishermen. Among these are the beehive fireworks celebrations honoring Guangdong and the bombing of Lord Handan, which serves a similar function. Of the wide variety of ceremonies, most important in each community is the peace sacrifice. This ceremony supplicating peace and good fortune is a regular event, usually held at three, five, or even ten-year intervals. Its purpose is to call on a deity to bring peace to the community, and at the same time, food and other offerings are made to hungry ghosts. On occasion, water lanterns will be released to guide the dead to shore where they can feast on the offerings, 
placating them so they will leave the community in peace. At the Zhongyuan Festival, primarily concerned with the spirits of the dead, Taoist temples hold pudu ceremonies to help spirits to a better place. From the piles of offerings, it is easy to see the money and material wealth that are devoted to this festival, and which reveal the vitality and hospitality of traditional communities. At the Grappling with Ghosts Festival held in Ilan County, in order to grab the highest blessings, men compete to climb up poles that have been covered in slippery fat. This is an example in which religion has developed into a competition of physical skill. To win divine protection, shopkeepers and the faithful compete to outdo one another to make festivals as exciting and elaborate as possible. Huge strings of firecrackers are set off to create the right atmosphere. Firecrackers are also regarded as effective in driving away evil beings and bringing forth good fortune. Temple courtyards feature in many people's recollections of childhood. In this undistinguished space, old men play chess, children play, and performances of traditional opera and folk shows are staged. During election campaigns, these are also focal points for candidates to solicit support. When vendors set up stalls, they also become a snack food heaven. Originally, such stalls provided simple meals for worshippers visiting the temple. The appeal of their foods was passed on by word of mouth, and soon, more people visited the temples for their food than for worship, making temple courtyards into a local tourist attraction. Competition is always intense between these stalls, which regularly advertise they were the first, the only, or the oldest. The stall owners have preserved the culinary culture of their home, and kept people well fed in the process. In addition to snack foods, stalls selling local specialties are an essential feature of many temple courtyards, especially those selling traditional cakes and confectionery. In less prosperous times, when people rarely left home, a visit to the temple would often involve a purchase of cakes as well. Local cakes, which combine local color and courtesy, are still often used as gifts to smooth social interaction. In traditional Taiwanese society, Temples combine religion, education, art, entertainment, local government, and defense within a single organization. They promote local prosperity and are a stabilizing force in society. Even in these days of technological development, temples continue to play an important role in Taiwan. Religious organizations build hospitals, libraries, and schools, and also set up activity centers for the elderly. Here, 
An appreciation of traditional music and art can be passed on to the next generation. They draw on local culture as a way of promoting education. Buddhist groups are extremely active. For believers not only take vows to practice their religion and emulate the spirit of bodhisattvas in helping others, they also take an active role in social education and relief work. Many practitioners also actively promote a spiritual environmentalism in the hope of increasing the quality of life in today's highly competitive world. The greatest wish of most people is for peace, security, and advancement of their country. Through the agency of temples, people pray for this ideal world. And also through the temples, deities respond to their wishes. Temples are a conduit between the sacred and profane worlds. Not only do they express the vitality and diversity of Taiwan's religions, they have also been instrumental in shaping our folk arts and popular culture, which in turn have been enriched by their influence. <laughs>